Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim. Rachakwadash, Yahweh be in the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah. Be in the name of the only begotten Son, the Rachakwadash, be in the Holy Spirit. Double understood the elders and the apostles that do well overseeing the tabernacle of David, which are the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Akim. That are upholding testimony of our Lord and Savior, how will shine truth and sincerity. I want to do a quick lesson of of prophecy update. Um, this is regarding Ethiopia or the land of Cush, the Cushite people, um, biblically speaking. And um, if you're not familiar with, with, with what has been taking place uh, in the last few months, there's been essentially a secular civil war. Uh, between rivaling tribal factions uh, in Ethiopia and it is doing nothing but escalating. As you can see see before you, uh, this is uh, RT News. It says Ethiopia's former FM, for, which stands for Foreign Minister, among three Tigray leaders killed in crackdown on region. <laughs> The, the governmental forces in Ethiopia are killing uh, governmental figures, all right? And this is a prelude. Keep in mind, this shall happen in America. This, what you see taking place now, is going to take place in America, all right? Now, why is Ethiopia so important, one might ask, ge geopolitically? Well, one, when you understand where they are, geographically speaking, they are in the... Um, the area of the Valley, Valley of Jehoshaphat, all right? Eastern Ethiopia is a part of, uh, essentially a part of the kingdom of heaven. The Valley of Jehoshaphat will be, uh, you know, when I say Valley of Jehoshaphat or, you know, people, some might say Armagadwan, Har Magadwan, Mountain of Troops, that vicinity, that area, the Middle East vicinity will be where this third world woe will be primarily facilitated and ultimately our Lord Yahweh Shah will come to destroy the nations and the heathen nations, their power structure. So before we get to there, you're going to see escalations such as this with different nations rising up against each other, um, inward strife with nations. Um, and, and this can escalate to, and to other regions, or may I say other nations, because what? Ethiopia sits in the midst of the Nile River. Right now, Ethiopia is going, if I'm not mistaken, it is Ethiopia that is uh, going through a, a dam project to facilitate the water. Because the Nile River, when you understand the Nile River, the water flows from the south to the north. So essentially, before the water can reach Egypt or the Mediterranean, Ultimately, is it passes through Ethiopia. Well, Ethiopia was trying to facilitate facilitate a dam, which I believe they're still trying to do, which will prohibit water from reaching uh, Egypt and um, basically crippling, destroying the Egyptian economy. Uh, e Egypt can't stand if if they ask, if they go through with this, which. As you can see, if you you know put two two pieces together, different rival factions, you know, e um, Egypt, of course, will probably take the side of one, and the adversaries of Egypt might take the sides of other. Can you see how this thing escalates? You know, can you see how you know these proxy wars can turn into complete asymmetric warfare and at the scale of what we would consider World War Three, and these things are coming. So I'm going to continue with this article. It says, former foreign minister of Ethiopia, uh, Seyom Mesfin, was among the three leaders killed by government forces. This wasn't not no Boko Haram, not no, you know, terrorists, not no ISIS, no governmental forces. This thing is very serious. It says, in the ongoing crackdown on the northern region of Tigray, which the authorities in Addis Ababa accused of insurrection insurrection and what do we see in america at a smaller scale insurrection 
<laughs> These things are coming to America. That's biblical prophecy. All right. Matter of fact, let's see. Uh, mm, mm. You get the point on that. Matter of fact, I want to get started get, grabbing some scriptures real quick. We can start off with this. This is Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. And the part of the Ethiopians, as you can see, being slain with the sword is through this civil war, ultimately will lead to a, a much greater scale war that they will have to participate in. They will have to choose sides, you know? And they're going to be a part of the war, the, uh, the war of Armageddon. And there the Lord is going to slay you damn Ethiopians with his sword. All right, you Cushite people, you know. Now you got we you have some Jakes, some Israelites living amongst them, certain factions of the Habesha. But you 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 regular Ethiopians, you other Ethiopians, man, for the most part, you are Cushites, you're heathens. The Lord is going to destroy you, all right, because of what your mistreatment of the children of Israel. All right. So um, let's see here. Let's get some more scriptures. Let me get Yahweh Shah. Let Let's get the Apocrypha. Yeah, beautiful. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 29. It says, Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. And that's speaking of the Israelites. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on earth. Right? Because these other nations are going to be shocked and amazed that the Lord is delivering the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We can go to the Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter and for further edification in that regard. Verse 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. One place against another. One people against another. One realm against another. And that's what you see taking place in Ethiopia. Verse 32, And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared. So this is before the New Testament. This is the Old Testament, essentially. This is the prophet Ezra. But you damn Muslims, you hypocrites, say the Lord Yahweh didn't have a son. Well, essentially, all of the Israelites are his sons. All of the Israelite elect are the sons of God. That's why it says in Hosea, what, 1 and 10, 11? It says, in the land that you should be called, not my people, there you should be called the sons of the living God. All right? So you guys are not on any level, man. And you coming up against the truth, speaking those blasphemous words, you're obviously going to pay for it in due season. So my son be declared, and who is that son speaking, speaking about? It's speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yahweh whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And that's prophecy. Mm. And because how did he ascend? You go to the book of Acts, I believe the first chapter, the ninth verse, he ascended up after he had a brief tarry after his resurrection with the disciples and he ascended up into the heavens. Um, and there he has been on the right hand of the Father doing his due diligence and in, in his labors uh, as the supreme son of, of, of God. All right. So Yahweh is going to come deliver the elect of the nation of Israel, man. You other heathen nations, he's coming in to destroy you, all right, according to biblical prophecy, according to the Bible, all right? So um, let's see here. Let's go to the, um, let's get some more, uh, let's get another article. I want to get another article in regarding of Ethiopia. Now watch this. Mm. The block is hot. Prophecy is hot. It says, Ethiopian forces surround Tigray region capital ahead of Serena deadline. The military forces have surrounded the region of Tigre. All right. What does the scripture just say? It says one city against another. All right. And they are about to unleash a, a, a artillery barrage that the likes of that period, that landmass of Ham possibly has never seen. They're about to shell the hell out of that goddamn. He said, matter of fact, let's get it. It's in this article. It says military figures. I'm gonna skip down. Matter of fact, let me just read all of this 
this first three paragraphs is federal forces in Ethiopia have surrounded the Tigra region capital after the country's government gave Tigra people liberation front a 72 hour deadline to surrender. If the TPLF does not surrender within that time frame, Ethiopia's prime minister, Abiy Ahmed, has threatened to begin to a military offensive on the capital amassing tanks and armed forces in the nearby city of Mekele. Military figures had earlier told local media that anyone who chooses, listen to this, anyone who chooses to remain in the city after the deadline has expired without peacefully surrendering will be shown no mercy. No mercy when the assault begins. I wanted to get, let's, let's go back. Let's get this again. <laughs> I like this scripture. This is a, yeah. Here where we at? Two and, um, damn. What is it? Two and, uh, two and 12. Ye, Ethiop ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. No mercy when the assault begins. All right? These people are not playing. They've been fighting for the last couple of months. All right, this hasn't been really heavy on the news. Um, you know, RT's pretty good in reporting certain things, but, you know, mainstream hasn't been speaking about it. They have been in a, a full-blown civil war for the last few months, you know? All right, so let's get a scripture in regarding that. All right? Hmm, you win... Refugee agency warns of full-scale humanitarian crisis in Ethiopia as conflict forces thousands to flee. Now I want to get a scripture regarding that. Let's see. Watch this. This is Second Ezra chapter. Um, matter of fact, let me just start at verse sixteen. It says. For there should be sedition among men. But these is two scriptures in one that I wanted. So verse 16, it says, For there should be sedition among men. And sedition is uprising or rebellion against the government. What do you see with this? The Tigri, the Tigri forces, the TPLF, they are going against the federal government of Ethiopia. It says, for there should be a sedition among men and invading one another. They should not regard their king nor princes. They don't regard Prime Minister Ahmed. It says, in the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Now, verse 17, a man should desire to go into a city and shall not be able. These people are not going to be able to go and leave and go into certain cities. Well, one, you can't go into Tigray. Right now, because it's encircled by Ethiopian federal troops. So you can't even go into this city. All right. Also, when these people flee, or you have max, mass, flee, mass people fleeing, and you're that, these other cities and other countries are not going to, want to take those refugees because that costs finances, it costs money, it's, it costs a, a lot of different resources, you know? You know, also in America, with these COVID thing, you know, excuse me, <laughs> these COVID, uh, essentially, they're going to start um, doing roadblocks. They're not going to let you, they, these cities are going to be shut down. You're not going to be able to go into certain cities. And that's a fulfillment of prophecy. A man should desire to go into a city and should not be able. Verse 18, for because of their pride, that the, excuse me, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. What did it just say in this article? It said, the, what did the military general say? It said in parentheses right here. Excuse me. No mercy. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of lack of bread and for great tribulation. 
right? So these things are being fulfilled. These prophecies are popping like popcorn. And that's why it's important for us to make case, give diligence, stay humble, and believe, ultimately have faith that Yahweh Bashim Shah, that he's going to give us those spiritual powers, that he's going to deliver us, that he's going to feed us, that he's going to comfort us, that he's going to fight for us, that he's going to do all these wonderful, miraculous uh, things in which we need ultimately to be delivered and to survive in such perilous times. All right, so Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rechach Kudash, the bunch of the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom and keep the faith.